O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In this uncertain season of Advent, we wait, hoping, hoping God is coming to us. In the vagueness of these days, we try to listen, hoping, hoping the word will be whispered to us. In the weariness of our times, we wait, we listen, we watch, hoping, hoping the Spirit will be found in our midst. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm for tonight is Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends out from Zion your mighty scepter, rule in the midst of your foes. Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day you lead your forces on the holy mountains. From the womb of the morning like dew, your youth will come to you. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute his judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter heads over the wide earth. He will drink from the stream by the path. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading tonight comes again from the prophet of Advent, Isaiah. We're reading the first four verses, then verses 8 through 11 of the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, 
They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. (coughs) For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Then our Old Testament song is from the Song of Hannah, found in 1 Samuel, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversary shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. He appears in all four Gospels, which means he plays an important role. But he's never appeared on any Christmas greeting card that I've seen, and I've never seen a figure representing him in any creche or manger uh, set of figures, but John the Baptist seems to be a key figure in the life and the ministry of Jesus. We're reading about John in the Gospel of John tonight from the first chapter, reading verses 6 through 8 and then verses 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, 
the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. And then our New Testament song is the song of Mary, the Magnificat, from Luke 1, verses 46 through 45. And here's a musical version of that. I invite you now to join with me in a few moments of prayer. My apologies, I am still not able to access the list of prayer requests uh, for the Synod of East Midlands, but perhaps we can just begin with a few moments of silence as we offer up our prayers of thanksgiving and praise to God for God's goodness and grace. God's love and mercy, God's justice and joy that appear in our lives in so many different moments and through so many different people. So let us pray and silence our thanksgivings. Amen. We continue to read from this book in this season of waiting, daily readings for Advent, uh, which I wrote and was published by the Wild Goose, Wild Goose Publications of the Iona Community. Uh, tonight for the third Sunday of Advent, it's entitled Delight of the Universe. And the reading is from Psalm 25, verses 8 through 10. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right. He teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. 
And here's a reflection. Arriving late for Humility 101, I slip into the back row, hoping you won't notice. Putting my notepad on the desk, I hold my pen to the paper so that it looks like I am paying rapt attention and taking copious notes. Making sure to keep my eyes wide open and glued to the board where you are showing the formula on how the last become first, I daydream of my nice warm bed. <clears throat> At the end of class, <clears throat> I turn towards the place where I can get a refill on my grande latte, not noticing my mates following you to the corner of steadfast love and faithfulness. And then we light the candle of joy in the season of waiting delight of the universes as we go to make angels in the snow with kids and dogs as we walk on beaches to marvel at your sunsets. Amen. And now let us lift up and silence our prayers for the world, for our nations, for our communities, for our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, even strangers that we know through media and know of their brokenness and concerns. For what shall we pray this night? In the days to come, may we work to establish justice in all the places of oppression. May we learn to set aside our differences like little children on a playground, meeting those who have just moved in. May we awaken from our apathy to discover the wonder offered to us by those we do not recognize as family. Then we will find ourselves standing within the gates of your grace approaching God. For what shall we pray this night? In the days to come, may we be alert to the opportunities we will have to welcome the stranger. May we keep our eyes open for the chances to offer hope to the despairing. May we expect to find you in every person we meet, in every place we go. Then we will find ourselves standing within the gates of your love, babe of Bethlehem. For what shall we pray this night? In the days to come, may we discover that fear has fled as your hope draws ever near. May we lay aside the shadows of our doubts and put on the shawl of grace. May we take all the weapons crafted from our fears, our anger, our regrets, and transform them into generous gifts of hope and life for all around us. Then we will find ourselves standing within the gates of your peace, spirit of gentleness. <clears throat> For what shall we pray this night? In the days to come, may we find ourselves standing within the gates of your heart, God and community, holy and one, even and especially as we pray the words that Jesus taught us using our own tradition and language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.